Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be looking at the first stage on the two-tone race spray on this Volkswagen T5 camper van. Okay, so this is the van itself. We've brought it into the booth and as you can see, it's pretty much fully prepped up at this point. We've just got a few little bits of prep to do. Once we've finished the masking stage and we can get around the hard to reach areas like the edges of the glass and stuff that we don't want to prep up and scratch before we've got them masked and we've got everything safe and sound. So I thought I'd just give you guys a little bit of a quick walk around on this camper van. We've been prepping this up during this week. It's going to go in two colours. The first colour is Nardo Grey, which we're going to be doing on the bottom, and then we're going to be doing it the standard Reflex Silver again on the top half. So the bottom half we're going to be doing it in a 2K gloss. That's already pretty much all prepped up. We've just got a few little bits of wet on wet primer and a few little bits and pieces to do to that. Then once that's done, we're going to be remasking it tomorrow and um, getting it ready for the top half which we're going to be doing in base coat and clear coat which we're going to be doing in the LA7W Reflex Silver. So for now I'm going to go and get some paint mixed up, we'll get some wet on wet put on and we'll get some paint on this van. Okay so before we get into this part of the video it turns out that 90% of you guys watching these videos aren't actually subscribed so if you do me a huge favour just take two seconds out while you're just watching me go around this van drop down hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell to be notified of when we've got a new upload okay so the first thing that we're going to do is give this thing a really nice good clean down now it already has been all panel wiped and tack ragged off once already um, before I went out and mixed the wet and wet primer up but we're just going to give this a second quick tack over now because the boo's been running for a few minutes so we just want to make sure that now the air's settled down that everything's nice and clean and also we need to address the last tiny little bit of masking along that top edge where that swage line is there because we don't want a hard line there when we're finished painting this bottom edge I want a little bit of the feathered edge there that I can easily sand out before we come round to painting the top side so the way that I'm going to do this is just by simply just laying a piece of tape around about with a half inch overlap over the edge. Now that will give me just enough of an overlap that I can get the paint underneath. And if I just go around and lightly fold it over like so, then that's going to give enough of a feathered edge that when this is done and we're fine lined off the bottom end, I can just lightly sand off that feathered edge. And that way it's not going to cause us too much issue or too much hassle when it comes to painting the top end. Also, it's a very cheap, cost-effective way of just masking this top end off. Yes, we could use some soft edge foam across there or some no-bled edge tape or something, but bear in mind we are going to just prep that edge up anyway with the sander and then we're going to fine line off and paint above. There's not much point in using an expensive material on there. We might as well use something cheap like a length of tape and then we can literally just take that little bit of the feathered edge off, mask up and go straight over the top of it. Now on the back end I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of false edge masking just to do pretty much the exact same thing. Um, I don't want a very hard thick edge there because I don't want to have to block this edge out after. And where the sort of the join in these back doors come um, it will be higher than it originally was because where this van originally was painted to was quite a strange sort of height really for where you'd normally paint one of these T5s. And also it was like two or three colours at the bottom and now we're just going for this one uniform colour. So wet on wet primer time and I'm just going to be using my standard high build mixed four to one. And um, My personal way of doing it is I had about 30% thinners which gives it a real nice flat even um, flow out on the van and we can just use a very small amount just to get coverage just to seal up any of the tiny little bare metal rub throughs or any little rub throughs or any little bits of fine filler where we've done a little bit of extra prep after we finish the main bulk of the repair stage on this van so the way that I'll do this is I'll set my gun as if I was painting like <clears throat> top coat because you want this to be nice and flat but at the same time, I'll only be using a tiny little bit of fluid and normally I'll turn the fan down around about halfway. So as you can see here, I've got a very, very small fan. Now, what this will enable me to do is to keep this quite accurate and only put this in the areas that I need it. And also it'll lay a very, very fine film 
of the primer so we're going to get no heavy dry overspray anywhere now although i say that we will still tack this off once we've given this around about a 20 to 30 minute flash off time in the booth with the heat running um, around about 25 26 degrees but with a, we will go around with the tack cloth just to be on the safe side that there's no overspray anywhere but if you do it and you mix it quite fine like this and it's quite thin and you lay it on with quite a bit of pressure so you just put in a very small controlled amount on the panel each time then what you'll find is that it'll lay really smooth with very little overspray and the aim for me when I put this down is to try and do it in one go um, if you do have to go back and touch any areas up where it's a tiny little bit of see-through that's okay but you don't want to get carried away with trying to overload the amount of wet and wet primer you're putting down you just want that very nice fine layer um, you know you're not trying to get any build here with this we're literally just trying to seal things up like along this edge here where we might have a bit of bare metal or around the hinge where we sanded the hinge down and especially on these t5s there's so many panel edges it's sometimes almost impossible to sand these down without breaking through when you're trying to prep one up for a respray like this and for me this respray as far as this van goes is quite an important one because not only is it for a local guy but it's also for a long time subscriber of ours now lewis the guy that owns this van um has been watching my channel for quite some time which was quite um quite amazing for me actually to meet somebody who's been watching it for quite a long time and a friend of his contacted me through instagram and said that he was interested in me painting this van for him and it turns out that after watching me for a few years he actually literally lives like less than five minutes away from our shop which is just brilliant um so lewis came down we had a bit of a chat about his van and he got it booked in and that's how this job came about so a shout out to lewis who's a long time subscriber of ours and also now a customer of ours which is really ace for us as a shop so for me this is quite an important job we want to make sure this job's right and not just because you know he's a subscriber or a local guy but because that's just the way we like to do things at the shop we like to keep these jobs as best we can and on this it's not the everyday run of the mill sort of tidy up job on a t5 that we do for another customer of ours you know we want this job as good as the cars that we put out so the prep work that's gone into this bottom end has been extremely extensive we went through did all the larger repairs which you can see are the main high build parts and then once the whole van had been prepped we went round piece by piece panel by panel put the fine filler on all the edges on sanded any little chips out of the door edges and went to absolute town on this van so that when we've got the 2k gloss down on this it will look absolutely stunning and to be honest i was more than happy with how this bottom end of this van came out it was really nice it was really clean it had a real nice flat gloss to it and um, when we'd finished painting this bottom end once it you know we kind of think it's himself right it's not my sort of choice of color nardo gray for a bottom end but once the wheels and all the other accents go on it and the top's nice bright silver again this van is really going to pop and it's going to be quite a stunning van when it's finished and it's nice for me not only as a business owner but also you know from a youtube perspective to be able to give lewis the van that he's envisioned and it the way that he wants it as well because for myself whether it be business owner youtube or anything else my main priority is customer satisfaction so we've got this 2k gloss now mixed up you can just see me doing a little test spray on the plastic sheet for the van we're going to be running around about 1.8 to 2 bar on the gun um this is 2k gloss it's mixed two to one and i'm using 10 percent thinners in it uh, i've got the booth cranked up to around about 26 27 degrees on this day because it's quite a cold damp day so i wanted this to flash off nicely and i want it to be able to put this on really nice really smooth really flat um in a nice wet flat finish to this paint job when it was done so for the first coat i'm just going for like a light wet coat i don't want to go too heavy i just want to put down really more of a grip coat coat number two i then turn the fluid out a little bit more and put a slightly wetter coat on and i left it around about 10 minutes before i put the second coat on 
and then I did put a third coat on this and again I put a little bit more fluid and left it around about 10 to 15 minutes between the second and the third coat. Now in this video I've got the first coat that we're going through here and then I have got the third coat which will come after this and obviously the finished pictures of the bottom end and then in part two we will take over from the bottom end and move over to the masking and then the top end part of the job. So you can see as I'm going up there where we put that slight soft edge along with that masking tape I'm just angling the gun underneath that to start off with to make sure that I get right underneath that gap and I paint where I need to in order for me to fine line that off in the future. And again I'd say we're probably running about a 50% overlap. We're not running too much fluid, probably around about two turns out on the gun. And we're just going to take this first coat nice and slow and careful, get a nice even coverage. This Nardo Grey in 2K is really good because, I mean, we're not necessarily going over a really light colour or a really dark colour, but this stuff covers really well. So one single coat of this and it's fully covered. The rest of it we're putting down. So we've got something to polish and we've got the depth of gloss on the paintwork and just to make sure we've got you know a nice film build on there for when this van's done because if anything when this van's done it's going to be more towards the sort of show van level of paintwork rather than just your everyday sort of paintwork on a van so we've got to take extra care to go around all these edges make sure we get all these little edges and nooks and crannies get all the little bits and pieces around the hinges Make sure all these bottoms, these door edges are fully coloured up. We don't want any of this old colour or any of the silver to be showing through when the job's finished. Because that really let the job down. You know, and you guys that have watched the channel for a while know I am quite picky. So we want to make sure we go to town on this van and make sure it's spot on. Now, in order to do this job, what we had to do was fully mask the van for a respray. But... At the same time, because we're doing this two-tone on the van and getting rid of the old two-tone, inside the doors we've had to mask up all the insides of the doors and then fine line off around the edges so that when we've put this colour down, there'll be a nice clean edge inside all the door shorts because if we just use soft foam, then it'd give like a feathered edge. And these newer vans, they're not like the older sort of bay windows or the split screens where you'd paint right inside the door shuts for a, a two-tone paint job normally these do stop on the outers so I've just stepped the fine line in a couple of millimeters fine lined a nice neat lip around the inners of the door shuts and then put masking tape all over the door shut where I know the overspray is going to go so that when this job's done and I pull that fine line out there'll be a real nice clean neat crisp line inside all the shuts which again it's the little details like that that I think that will make the job when it's finished. At the same time, Lewis has also got some parts off this van um, in the shop with our other business being powder coated. So the side rails that get bolted on the side, they're being powder coated um, in the other side of the shop by Mick. Uh, the wheels for this are also getting powder coated and they're getting done in like a root beer colour which is a little bit of a cross between a bronze and a gold and I have recorded the footage of the powder coating of that. So possibly in part two or part three, I will put that in as a little bit of a bonus piece of footage so you guys can see the powder coating stage on the wheels because the color on them is absolutely stunning. And I think the sort of three color combo of this van when it's finished with the gray, the silver and the bronze is gonna really, really make this van pop. Um, when I was chatting to Lewis about how he wanted this to look, we spent a lot of time going through a little different bits and pieces of where he wanted different colours and how he wanted to break colours up um, like the front bumper and stuff like that and I think this will look really really special when it's finished it won't be your sort of your average T5 that's just I don't know a white top end and a bright orange bottom end um, you know quite a bit of thought's gone into the colour scheme of it um, and as I said before it's nice to be able to be the shop um, and the painter that can give Lewis his ideal dream of what he wants his van to be. So we're just about reaching the coat, the end of coat number one. So what I will do is I will go out and mix up the paint for coat number two, which will give this around about a 10 minute flash off time. And then I came back in and hit this with coat number two. I then went and mixed up a little bit more of the gloss for coat number three. And then coat number three is where we're going to take over in a second. 
So as you can see, that's really nice coverage on it. We've got a nice flat finish. That's going to flash off nicely and give us a real nice layer now. So once we've got coat two mixed up, um, we can now, here on coat number two, start applying this a little bit wetter than we did on the first and second coat. Sorry, coat number three. This is now not coat number two. Now, we also removed all the arch liners and everything out of this to make sure that we could get right underneath all them arches and make sure the colour was nice. And you'll probably tell by the spray gun there that there's a lot more material coming out there, but you can see straight away the reflection off that panel. We've got a nice, crisp, flat reflection off that, which already at this stage is better than factory. But as a lot of you guys know, we're not just going to leave this to a factory finish or a better than factory finish with this being a full respray. Any full respray we do in our shop, we like, um, especially something like this where it's like one off colours and it's a bit of a custom job, then we will fully flat and polish this and make it look absolutely spot on and give it that real nice flat clean finish all over the van. And I'd say that's kind of where we've got our reputation for jobs like this that you know we do sort of put in that extra little bit of work. Now, as far as any dirt nibs or anything like that goes, there was like barely anything in this van um, I could probably count on two hands the amount of nibs there were in this because um, we spent so much time making sure this was prepped and cleaned before it came in so once all the prep work had been done to this van bar the tiny little edges around the windows we took this out we gave this a full wash off got the pressure washer right inside all the window edges door edges made sure everything was fully cleaned out again which would be for the second time because we'd always wash all that out before we even start on the van especially on a full respray like this we get TFR, wash out all the door shuts, make sure everything's clean and crisp before we start then um, once we've done all the prep work and we've got everything sanded down and all the prime work have been done and blocked out and sanded we'll take it back out, we'll give it another full wash and then the night before we're going to get it prepped up and masked for paint We'll actually bring it into the booth straight after it's been washed and put it through a bake cycle for around about half an hour to make sure it'll dry the van right out and to make sure that if any you know, moisture is soaked into the primer or any of the filler or anything like that, that everything will get baked fully dry out. Because if, if you put it outside and it gets damp or if you've put some primer down and then you've taken it out and you've washed it off, and even wet flatting primer can do this. Um, primer is porous so even though you think right well I've dried the car off yes it will look dry it will feel dry but the primer and filler and a lot of the products that we use before we put the top coat on are porous so you want to make sure that if you have the option like we do that you put it into the booth and you give it a quick bake and that will stop any further problems down the line because You'd paint it just fine and then maybe a month or a week or a year later that moisture will start to seep out and will start to make the paint pop and it can cause all sorts of issues. So one thing that you do want to make sure is even if you just wet flat in the car just put it in the booth give it a bake for half an hour um, before then you take it in and you do the masking and then you start shooting colour down because everything goes into the prep. You know we spent probably a week maybe 10 days on this van before it even sees the boo for top coat now as far as this goes it was probably uh, I don't know less than an hour's worth of actually painting the top half will probably be less than an hour's worth of painting and say when it comes around to the bumpers and all the trims there's probably an hour or two of painting all the little awkward bits and getting all that done so there's less than a day's worth of painting for 10 days of prep so you don't want to skimp on the on the prep side or the paint you know because when you get into the booth and you go to put the color on then you you know any prep work that you've missed or that you haven't done properly is really gonna impact the final finish on the van so as I was always told um, as not as an apprentice but as a youngster you know the key you know it's all about the three pre the three P's Preparation, 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 and I think that doesn't matter whether it comes down to the filler work or the primer work or your pre-paint prep or your masking, you know, just do it, double check it, just make sure everything is 110% in your mind right before you even start to think about mixing any paint up. 
And I also think a little bit of OCD does help in this job as well, but I think any good painter out there has got a little touch of OCD, whether they like to admit it or not. Um, I think it comes as part of being good at this job, because um, you do really have to so I'm not second question your work, but you're always, you know, you'll prep something, you know you've prepped it right, but any good painter will always double check the work that he's done before he goes out and mixes any colour up. Um, so we are coming near towards the end of this third coat, guys. In the second video, we are going to go through masking off the middle section and the prep that we're going to do on the middle section. And then we'll go through a full wet on wet then on the top end that we're going to put the silver down on and the base and clear section on that. In part three, we'll probably include some of the panel work um, as far as the panel painting went. And also I'll drop in the powder coating footage of the wheels and give you a finished view of the van. And also if we can get hold of Lewis um, just to have a little bit of a chat about his van. Um, and about his experience of having it done and also his final thoughts on his own van that he trusted us with to make his realization of what he wanted the van to be come true. I also want to take a quick minute to thank all you guys that are subscribed to the channel because when I started this channel off all those years ago never did I ever think we'd reach 20,000 subscribers and I think at the time this video goes out we should have hit 20,000 or we'll be extremely, extremely close. And if you are one of the 90% of people that watch the videos that aren't subscribed, please do me a big favor. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and also hit the subscribe button if you enjoy our videos and hit that bell to be notified of when we have a new upload as well. And no matter what, this year I'm gonna try and put a lot more effort into YouTube. I've just built a new computer and we've just got new recording equipment for the voiceovers to try and make the videos better and easier to edit for you guys so we can get more content up throughout the year and get it up more regularly as well. Okay, so that's it for part one on this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the paintwork that we've just gone through on this video and the explanation of what we've done and why we're doing it. In part two, we're gonna take a look at masking off the bottom half and then prepping up the top half and then the base and clear on the top half. And then in part three, we're gonna go through some of the panel work and some of the little bits and pieces that we've done for the van as well, as well as show you guys the wheels we've powder coated and then we'll give you a look at the final van when it's finished. That's it for me for today, guys. See you again soon.